Hello, this video is going to be about controlling a, uh, a motor type system in position control. And to start with, I'm going to, we have the uh, plant or the motor and transfer function. This is the open loop transfer function. This part here would be the, uh, the gain and the corner frequency and the pull uh, due to the inertia for a open loop velocity system. But because we have an S in the denominator, we integrate the velocity uh, to position. And that's what you want to do is control position. The controller is a simple PID. And the reason why we're using a PID is because we want to be able to place all three poles that are going to result from the, uh, in, that are going to be in the closed loop transfer function. So to define the closed loop transfer function, uh, we have the, the basic formula here. And I'm going to substitute for the um, controller and the open loop uh, transfer function and then simplify it so that we have the characteristic equation in the denominator. Next thing we're going to do is choose a desired characteristic equation and uh, that's going to determine how the system is going to respond. The way I want my motor systems to respond is I always want them to move to position and not overshoot, no matter what. So that means even if there's a step change in position, I do not want to have the motor overshoot. So to do that, I need to place three poles uh, on the negative real axis. Uh, that way there's no complex or imaginary parts that are going to oscillate or cause overshoots. So to calculate the gains, what we need to do is uh, we have three uh, unknowns, ki, kp, kd, and we need to have three equations. So we're going to use the coefficients uh, for the uh, actual uh, characteristic equation and the desired characteristic equation to generate three equations. We're going to do that by matching the coefficients. So uh, here I have lambda cubed lambda cubed, and that's going to be equal to uh, k times alpha times ki. See, that's the zero power of s. The first power of s, 3 times lambda squared, that's going to be k times alpha times kp, which what you see down here. And then finally we have the second power of s. So we have 3 times lambda is going to be equal to k times alpha times kd plus alpha. And we solve and we get uh, three uh, symbolic formulas for Ki, Kp, and Kd. And notice that uh, Kd can be negative. Uh, Kd will be negative if uh, the lambda happens to be lower than alpha divided by 3. As it turns out, alpha divided by 3 is also the breakaway point. So if you want to have a faster response, we can uh, move lambda further to the left, make it more negative, so we can get a faster response. If we need to have a slower response, we need to use an overdamped response where some of the poles are going to be uh, closer to their origin than the breakaway point, and some are going to be uh, farther away from the origin than the breakaway point. But you can see that if you um, are limited by the uh, breakaway point, uh, it's going to very it's going to limit the response very much. So now I'm going to uh, assign some parameters. I've got my open loop gain, which is 10 millimeters per second per percent. So my maximum velocity is going to be 1,000 millimeters per second squared or per second. And I have my alpha, which is the uh, bandwidth. It's not very fast, but that's so that. Uh, uh, we can see the nice curves on the graphs. Uh, this would be the time constant, the open loop time constant. And what we're going to do is we're going to place the three poles at uh, minus two times alpha. And that's going to uh, increase the uh, bandwidth, the closed loop bandwidth, by uh, quite a bit. So by making those substitutions, we can calculate um, Ki, Kp, and Kd, and feed forwards, although we're not using those. Next is uh, creating the uh, open loop system. 
So we have uh, state space, we've got a, the continuous uh, formulas, and now we have to convert that to discrete form. And if you were using MATLAB, you would use the EXPM uh, function, but uh, MathCAD does not have EXPM functions, so I had to do my own Taylor series using arrays, which is what you see here. And next is the PI control. This updates the state given the, uh, the current state and the uh, control output from the time before. We, this computes the uh, proportional and derivative terms of the, uh, the PID and then this line uh, updates the integrator and uh, prevents wind up by using uh, limits to limit uh, basically plus or minus 100%. Uh, minus whatever the output is from the uh, proportional and derivative terms, and that keeps the integrator from winding up. Uh, to start with, I'm going to do some simple step ch changes, and this way I can uh, prove that the response is critically damped. It will not overshoot the set point. And we're going to do uh, what looks like a thousand iterations. So here is the response. Gotta stop it. Okay. So this is the, the position response. We can see there is a, uh, a target position. It's kind of difficult to see. The target position does a step up to 100 millimeters. And uh, the actual position goes up to uh, 100 millimeters and doesn't overshoot. The control output uh, saturates at uh, 100 uh, percent. Uh, and that's due to the step jump and you can see the integrator winds down and then it winds back up to uh, zero And that's due to the uh, limiting function and then I'm doing a jump or a step change in the negative direction and uh, You can see that there's the, uh, the the target position is down here but the uh, actual uh, position goes right to the target position without overshooting. So then we finally make a, a move to minus 50 millimeters and you can see again the uh, response does not overshoot. This is the, uh, the velocities and you can see the velocity goes to 1000 millimeters per second and then it starts ramping down. The fact that you can see the velocity does not go negative means that it doesn't overshoot because if it overshot, it would have to have a negative velocity to get back into position. Now I'm going to make a, uh, uh, a more useful type of move. I'm going to use uh, uh, do a, a move from 0 to 500 millimeters using cosine ramps. And this is a, a, the PID pretty much like what you saw before. And here is the nice cosine ramps, and you can see the, uh, in the integrator is lagging a little bit, the uh, control output, and the uh, position, and you can see the target and actual position are one line, or they look like one line, so they're tracking very, very close. And then we can see the velocity, and you can see that there's just a little bit of difference between the target and actual velocity, but uh, for the most part it is tracking very, very close. So the uh, symbolic formulas we calculated have uh, done what we expected them to do and they're working just as predicted. So let's take a look at the Bode plots. I've got the closed loop uh, Bode plot uh, calculations. This is the closed loop transfer function from above. And we are going to do iterations from uh, 0.1 hertz to 1000 hertz and we're plotting the magnitude and phase. So you can see the uh, magnitude is pretty much flat all the way out to about two, three, four, five hertz. And then uh, the phase is also pretty flat to about five hertz. And this basically um, is exactly what we see with the graphs up above where the tracking is pretty near perfect. And that's because the uh, cosine ramps have a frequency of about uh, one and a half hertz. So 
we are operating, our motion profile is operating in, in this area right here. So again, everything is working as we expect it to. Now let's look at the uh, poles and zeros. And uh, this is the, uh, the simplified version of the closed loop transfer function with the characteristic equation in the, in the denominator. And we're calculating out what the po where the poles are. And if you remember, alpha is set to 2 times pi times 10 hertz. So the, um, you know, that's 62.8 uh, radians per second about. And then the lambda or the, the closed loop poles are going to be set to uh, minus 125, which is uh, twice that. And you can see the poles are exactly where we expect them to be. And then the zeros happen to be uh, between the uh, closed loop uh, poles and the origin. So that causes a rise in our transfer function at the higher frequencies. This is caused by the zeros. And to prove that, what I am going to do is remove the uh, gains from the forward path. Now, a PID adds two zeros to the closed loop transfer function, which is what we have seen. And if I remove the derivative gain, uh, now watch down below where the red line is for the, the uh, magnitude. You can see that the uh, uh, bandwidth has been decreased. Uh, zeros increase the, uh, the bandwidth. And, but by removing one of those zeros, we have made the amplitude of uh, the response at about, what, what is that, about 11 hertz or so, 10.5. We've reduced the magnitude of response and uh, um, we've also changed the phase because before the phase was at minus 90 degrees and now it's at minus 180. And if we look down below, Oh, I'd have to change this to a zero. See, there'd be one zero, one real zero, and that causes the amplitude. As you scan this way, the amplitude uh, increases, and then the poles cause the amplitude to decrease, or the magnitude. So I'm going to put this back. And I'm going to change one more thing here. I'm going to remove KP. Now there's going to be no zeros. And you can see that because there are no zeros, there's uh, no overshoot, or the, the magnitude never goes above uh, 0 dB. And uh, uh, down below, there just wouldn't be a, a zero. So there's different options that you have with a PID. You can have all three gains be in the forward path. In other words, they're acting on the error. If you remove KD from the forward path, that means that the derivative gain is only acting on the changes in position, or what people call the process variable. And if you remove KP and KD from the forward path, then the uh, KP and KD are only acting on changes in the process variable or the position and only the integrator is working on the error. Uh, the, I call this mode where the KP and KD are removed from the forward path I minus PD and it has some uses in uh, motion control. So again, the key thing here is that we are calculating the symbolic formulas and uh, they're, they're pretty simple to do even by hand. One other thing we could look at is that uh, this lambda allows us to move the closed loop poles beyond the breakaway point. So we can get a much faster response. And in theory, we can make this almost infinite. But in practicality, you can't because we don't have infinite resolution. If I make this a 5 alpha, you can see that the output is going to saturate plus and minus, 
and it makes the system, well, you, it, it looks like it's tracking, but you wouldn't really want to run in, at this uh, high gains. And you can see that the uh, velocity, you would hear the, the motor humming. So there is a practical limit to how high you can uh, increase the gains, even if the poles are on the, uh, the negative real axis. So going back, this still makes the system much faster, um, provides much faster response than if we just used a KI controller where the uh, poles would be limited to some place around the breakaway point, which is minus alpha divided by three. So the PID gains are, or the PID control is the best way to control a motor with, uh, in position mode.